Now, the rise of abolitionism in the country in the 1850s uh, upset a lot of people. And of course, this is John Brown. When he led his reign on the our federal arsenal of Harpers Ferry, Virginia, it stirred up a lot of consternation in Saline County. Meetings were held in Arrow Rock to pass resolutions on what kind of actions to to take. And for example, William B. Sappington, whose uh, house you saw just a second ago, uh, helped craft and deliver a memorial to the Missouri State Legislature that in part pledged Missouri's allegiance to, quote, to other southern states in such measures as may be necessary for the maintenance of their rights under the Constitution, unquote. Specifically, uh, William was addressing the constitutional right that he viewed as slavery. Now, in 1860, the total population of Saline County was 14,699, and one-third of that number, or 4,876, were enslaved African Americans. Most of them were working on plantations, although many of them living directly in Arrow Rock were household slaves or they worked at the river landing as stevedores or in the warehouses as laborers, that type of thing. So, and of course we can see that Saline County is right in the middle of the, the biggest area of uh, slave population in the United States. So even though the uh, overall population of slaves in the state and the country was very, very small, property rights of slave owners were a key election issue for the citizens of Saline County in 1860. Now, of course, Sarah Rock's native son, Claiborne Fox Jackson, uh, won the 1860 election as Missouri governor. The vote in Arrow Rock Township actually pushed him over the edge of victory. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, although elected uh, president, of the failed to gain a single vote in the county. Uh, there were a lot of derisive remarks in the local newspapers describing uh, Abraham Lincoln as that black Republican uh, because there was a perception by the Democrats that the Republicans were uh, uh, going to supersede the rights of, of white property owners with black rights and that type of thing. Now, the bombardment of Fort Sumter, South Carolina on April 14, 1861, of course, plunged the nation into war. Although, depending on your viewpoint, some historians believe that the uh, border trouble between Kansas and Missouri could be defined as the beginning of the war in 1855. But the bombardment threw Saline County into a turmoil. Uh, our former governor, Meredith Miles Marmaduke, who lived west of town, remained a staunch union supporter, but he was a minority voice in the county. However, his prestige was such in the county, he was not molested uh, for his southern or pro-union views. Uh, now, of course, his son, John Sappington Marmaduke, resigned his U.S. Army commission and eventually became a major general in the Confederate Army. His brother, Vincent, <clears throat> remained loyal like his father, but events did cause him to turn. And we'll speak a little bit more about Vincent later on. Their cousin, William S. Jackson, who was Claiborne Fox Jackson's son, resigned his army commission, and he formed a unit known as the Saline Jackson Guards. And in the latter half of the war, they operated as partisan guerrillas, commonly referred to as bushwhackers. Now, Governor Jackson initiated efforts to bring Missouri into the Confederacy, or to secede, almost immediately. He issued a call for volunteers to join the pro-secessionist Missouri State Guard to repel any federal invasion. And I've got a copy of his proclamation out there in the exhibit case, if you want to look at it. And naturally, men from Arrow Rock and Saline County helped fill the ranks. Now, Jackson assembled the State Guard at Camp Jackson near St. Louis. And on May 10th of 1861, um, Captain Nathaniel Lyon, down here as a general, captured the guardsmen without firing a shot. Well, rioting commenced in the streets of St. Louis, 
and which lions subdued by force. And uh, the only surviving article, interestingly enough, from the Saline County Herald, which was then the major newspaper of the county and was published here in Arrow Rock, the only surviving article we have is about the Camp Jackson affair. <laughs> And uh, that came from the collection of uh, uh, or the family of James Allen, the publisher. So Mr. Allen obviously thought that was a, such a significant event. He saved that small piece of his paper. Uh, Jackson and the pro-secessionist legislature uh, <clears throat> were on the target list now. And uh, Lyon was promoted to a general, and on June 14th, he captured Jefferson City and placed the capital under martial law. Jackson and the pro-secessionist members of the legislature retreated to Boonville. Now, 1,700 troops under Lyon advanced up the river to Boonville by steamboat. And against the advice of his nephew, Colonel John S. Marmaduke, Jackson decided to make a stand at Boonville. And probably only five or 600 of the 1,800 guardsmen assembled were well enough armed to participate in a battle. Most of these guys were farmers and merchants with shotguns and squirrel rifles such as that. On June 17, 1861, the armies met just east of Boonville. And after a dreadful uh, artillery barrage, the inexperienced state guardsmen, quote, left in about the order they came, every man for himself." Unquote. Now this first battle of Boonville was derisively known thereafter as the Great Lion Hunt, the Great Missouri Lion Hunt, and in some papers as the Boonville Races because of the speed with which the secessionists fled the scene. And of course, this is, uh, this is our uh, native son governor Governor Jackson right here, and of course here's the General Lyon in hot pursuit. 